very useful technique for computing the Mobius function of a post set is to try to decompose the post set into a product. So let me explain what the product of a family of post sets is. Suppose you have P alpha, a family of partially ordered sets indexed by alpha uh, in an index set I. The product post set is uh, the post set on the Cartesian product. Uh, with the relation x alpha alpha and i is less than or equal to y alpha alpha and i if and only if x alpha is less than or equal to y alpha for all alpha and i. This becomes a partially ordered set. And it's called the product of the post sets P alpha. So uh, we've already seen some examples of these things. Uh, firstly, uh, we had n cross n with the relation ij is less than or equal to i prime j prime if and only if i is less than or equal to i prime and j is less than or equal to j prime and this is clearly an example of a product post set uh, let's look at uh, another more interesting example which is you take a uh, positive integers and the divisibility partial order uh, now, if you look at um, um, two integers, uh, m and n, such that m divides n, then the interval m n is isomorphic. So, this consists of integers which are divisible by m and divide n. But if you divide those integers by m, you just get all the integers which are divisible by n by n. Okay, and so in order to understand this interval, it's enough to understand this interval. And so let's look at this thing. So 1 comma n, now I'll just drop the m here. Uh, so what is this? Can we write this as a product? So can we write it as a product of something? Well, it turns out that uh, this post set, its structure reflects the prime factorization of n. So suppose we have n is p1 raised to k1, p2 raised to k2, pr raised to kr, where p1, p2, pr are distinct primes. and k1, k2, kr are positive integers. Then uh, we have that 1 comma n is isomorphic to um, 0 comma k1 cross 0 comma k2 cross 0 comma Kr, where 0 comma ki is just the post set consisting of all integers between 0 and ki with the usual uh, order. And uh, how do you get this isomorphism? Well, any uh, number in here is of the form p1 raised to r1. So if you have an integer k belongs to this, then k is of the form p1 raised to r1. Let's not do r, p1 raised to l1 pr raised to lr where li lies between 0 and ki. So, so 1 comma n consists of such integers and clearly divisibility just means so if, if you have 
uh, an integer corresponding to L1, L2, LR, and another integer corresponding to M1, M2, MR, then uh, the former divides the latter if and only if Li is less than or equal to Mi for each i. And that gives you an isomorphism between these two both sets. Okay, the last example that I'm going to do here is the power set. So let's take any set X and let's consider the O set P uh, consisting of all subsets of X under containment. And uh, let's say 2, this notation box 2 means the set 1 comma 2 um, with the usual order on it. And uh, the power set of X, this partially ordered set is isomorphic to the product over all x in x of this O set 2. So of x, cardinality of x many copies of 2. So we can usually write this as box 2 to the x. And again, I'll just tell you what the correspondence is. Uh, you'd have a subset S here, then you map it to uh, the, the, the element of the product set Ax, uh, x in x, where Ax is equal to 1 if x is not in S and um, 2 if x belongs to S. And um, this is easily seen to be an isomorphism. Once you know the Mobius functions of a family of post sets, you can easily compute the Mobius function of their product. So let uh, P alpha alpha belong to I be a finite family of both sets. Uh, with the property that, uh, you know, um, locally finite. So this just means that each uh, post set P alpha is locally finite and this indexing set i is also finite. And uh, the Mobius, uh, so we the, let p be the product post set alpha in i p alpha. And uh, the theorem is that the Mobius function of p at uh, x alpha comma y alpha is nothing but the product over alpha in i of the Mobius functions of p alpha at x alpha comma y alpha. Uh, for the proof, I just need to show that uh, this function given on the right hand side here is in fact a multiplicative inverse of zeta. So let's just uh, do the computation. Let's, let's uh, take the um, product of this with zeta. So what we get is a summation. So, so let's let's uh, let's just call that RHS or let's, let's call this u tilde x alpha comma y alpha. So what we have is mu tilde x alpha comma y alpha. Uh, maybe I'll write it like this: mu tilde star zeta of x alpha comma y alpha. Well, by definition, this is mu tilde, uh, let's put it like this, summation over all z alpha, mu tilde uh, x alpha comma z alpha. And uh, times zeta of z alpha comma y alpha, but zeta is one unless, uh, you know, so we can just replace this by z alpha less than or equal to y alpha and greater than or equal to Okay, but now the point is that this uh, set of Z alpha that are in between X alpha and Y alpha uh, This itself is a product set. So this interval In P is the product of the intervals X alpha comma Y alpha in P alpha. And so this sum can be uh, factored uh, 
over alpha. Sorry, this is sum over z alpha less than or equal to y alpha mu p alpha x alpha comma z alpha. But this is nothing but the product over all alpha in i delta because this mu p alpha is indeed the Mobius function of p alpha. So this sum will be uh, delta uh, p alpha of x alpha y alpha. But that is nothing but delta p of x alpha comma y alpha. So the Mobius function of the product uh, is the product of the Mobius function of the factors. Mu tilde here is indeed the Mobius function of the product. Uh, so let's apply this to a few examples. We've already, in fact, uh, computed the Mobius functions of um, the power set of a finite set and of n squared, you can go back and check that those calculations are actually uh, consistent with this product decomposition. But uh, let me just uh, show you the computation of the most classical Mobius function, the Mobius function of positive integers under divisibility using this idea. So, consider p equals positive integers under the divisibility partial order. And we've seen already in the, if m divides n, then the interval mn is isomorphic to one comma n by m. And so the Mobius function in a p of m comma n is nothing but the Mobius function in p of uh, 1 comma n by m and so it's enough to compute mu p uh, 1 comma m for every n in p which I will which is classically in fact denoted by mu subscript m so this is called the this is the classical Mobius function, which comes up in number theory, where all this really started. So we need to compute uh, this mu sub n for each integer n. Now, if n is equal to p1 raised to k1, pr raised to kr, where p1, p2, pr are distinct primes and k1, k2, kr are positive integers, then the interval 1n is isomorphic to the product of, we've already seen this, and uh, this is a subposet set of uh, non-negative integers with the usual order. And so mu n is going to be the product, i goes from 1 to r, mu n of uh, 0 comma ki which we know is equal to uh, so we already computed the mobius function of non-negative integers with the usual order and we saw that it is usually 0 it's 1 if i is equal to j and minus 1 if i plus 1 is equal to j so this thing is uh, 0 if ki is greater than 1 for any i because then one of these factors will become 0 it is uh, minus 1 to the r otherwise. So that means that all the ki's are either uh, are, are 1. So we are looking at the number of prime factors. The integer n is square free. It doesn't, it is not divisible by the square of any prime and it has r prime factors. And in that case, each of these Mobius functions, this will just be mu n of 0, 1. And uh, that's minus once we get minus one to the r otherwise. 
and this is uh, the computation of the classical Mobius function in number theory.